Hello. I have a lot of stuff to get off my chest. You know, 18 months ago, specifically 19 months ago, and more accurately 19 months ago, I made the decision to move here with my adopted family figure because I completely trusted her. I put my whole faith in her and I put my full confidence in her just like I do with God every day because God doesn't allow me to treat anyone else that's my elder or any of my friends or enemies, regardless of where they stand, any different. Which is not really that hard to figure out now, is it? You think about all the times that I have been threatened with the possibility, or rather the inevitability of, a, of eviction. Do you know how many times I've been told that if I want to keep living here, I have to do what my adopted family figure says? Because my adopted family figure doesn't think that I'm listening to her, but I listen to everything that she says. And I know everything that she does because she tells me about it every day single day and truth be told that's only page one in an infinite amount of pages and chapters of an endless book that doesn't end until i do let's take some stuff into consideration for a moment consider how much of a cluster frack the place that I'm living at now was when I first moved here 19 months ago. It wasn't anywhere near like it is now. And since then, I have done everything in my power to help out whenever I was obliged to whenever I needed to, whenever God called upon me to, because that's what he sent me here for. And I'm still willing to do that even now. And that's the thing. But my adopted family figure are, my adopted family figure, I should say, is a lot like what, too many people are in this world. Too overclocked, too stressed out, and too triggered to care. That's what they are. They are too triggered to focus on anything because they deliberately and intentionally let Satan allow all this stress to get to them for whatever comical reason just because they have free will, because God gave them free will, and they waste it by making stupid decisions. Of course, I'm not going to lie. I'll be the first to admit. From time to time, I do seem as though I'm disobedient. And in one out of every maybe 12 or 13 cases, I am. But I mean no harm in it. The other times in which I'm supposedly disobedient or disloyal or deliberately, intentionally mischievous. I'm not really any of those. I try, just like anyone else, to make ends meet. I try everything in my power, with every fiber of my being, to keep this place running. And I try every day, all day, to keep every animal in or outside of this property nourished, fed, and watered 
to keep every room smelling fresh and clean. But that's not good enough, is it? Not good enough. It's not good enough for her. And she isn't afraid to tell me that. And you know what? I don't hate it for her. Right? I don't hate her for that. I don't hold it against her. I don't even blame her. Because I don't need to. Because it's not in my jurisdiction. It's not in my right of way. Because she's already blaming herself for that now. And it's actually quite crazy to think of it like that. But in reality, it's a fact. I remember there was a time not too long ago when I first came here that maybe the decision wasn't really the best one I could make. But at the same time, I was still confident completely and utterly that I had made in reality and in life the best possible decision that I could have possibly made in that moment. I chose not to live in another group home because group homes taught me nothing. And like at any other point prior to me coming in a group home, I taught myself through trial and error as God designed me to as God designed everyone and everything to. And you know that. You all know that. And that's not even the half of it now, is it? Let's take into consideration a verse in St. John's first book of Revelation, because we know now, just like we've known since the Third Testament was published separately, in a separate tome in the 1920s that there were two other books of Revelation written by St. John himself that were supposedly not included in the Bible because they were too historically accurate. Far too historically accurate, even for modern times, for any time period, for that matter. But they also hold in those two second and third revelation books truths that no one else will even dare to admit. But that's the second and third books. This is the first book that was included in the final book of the Bible in the New Testament. There's a verse in there that I learned yesterday through one of my friends, through one of my fellow human beings, through one of my fellow children of Christ, because that's what we all are, we're children of Christ. She told me about this verse in Revelation that states that there would come a time at some point in our human history, sometime soon, where everyone would be at war with themselves biologically. So basically biological warfare, which in turn meant, according to St. John, as he wrote the first book of Revelation, that parents would turn against their offspring and their offspring would turn against their parents and it would be essentially a war between generations. And sure enough, that's exactly what I see now and something that I have seen since I was born in 1993. It's been a battle between generations because they can't coexist with each other because they don't want to, because they don't care. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, to all of you people on YouTube and vid.me and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and Gmail and DeviantArt, that I care. I absolutely care.
care. 100%. I care because God allows me to. And more importantly, because I allow myself to. Because God gave me that right. He gave me that privilege. He gave me that ability to speak for myself. Because he's God, he can do that. And I know it because I see it in everything that I watch, everything that I do, everything that I personally am a bystander to witness. No matter whether or not it's on TV or in real life surrounding me. I know this because it's true. I know this because it's a fact. And I know this because it is indisputable. It's undoubtable. It's unput downable. Or should I say unput downable? It cannot be denied. It cannot be disputed or questioned. It cannot be debated because it's not up for debate. It's a fact because God sees it in me when no one else will. And I guess that includes most of you. So it just makes sense. And I know why too, because you don't want to, but because you have all these other things going on with your own lives, you don't have enough time to allow yourself to because priorities first, because everything has to come first, but most of you don't trust God enough. I'm not going to say that you people don't trust God enough at all. And I'm not going to say that you people don't trust God at all, because that would be a lie. I'm just saying that you don't trust God enough. You trust him, but you don't trust enough. And I think it's really sad. Because we need God now more than ever before. We need the blood of Christ now more than ever before. But Christ has already given his blood and he's continuing to give his blood to us simply because he can. Because he's selfless, just like his father and deity incarnate God. Because God and Jesus Christ are technically the same thing, but at the same time, there are two completely different entities. Just like they're the same as the Holy Spirit and fate. Despite being completely different entities in themselves altogether. Hence why I mentioned the Holy Quadrony in my last video. And I believe it to be completely important to say to you all that there will never be another better time to act and turn to God as right now. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. God's gonna not God's not gonna wait much longer for us to turn back to him. Because the clock has been ticking for 142,018 years. And let me tell you something. If we don't allow ourselves to turn back to God and reject Satan and his many temptations, then God will lose his patience with us. And he will unleash his entire wrath on us. But not before or not after. Christ is going to come back someday, but none of us will ever know when. Only God will know, and he's not telling us. But he will show us. Because he's all show, all action, almighty. Because he's God, he can do that. And he already is now. I don't lie to you when I say this. Nor do I have any intention to lie to you. Nor do I want or need to. Because I know that what God's been telling me since August of 2015 has been, is, and always will be 
100% truth. God is telling me every day, just as he's telling me right now, that we all need to turn back to him before he loses his patience with us. And we're not going to know when he loses his patience with us until it's too late. And not before. So it's best to just turn back to God now and be done with it. Because we will not get another chance to do so moving forward. We will not get another opportunity to do this. We will not get another chance in any way, shape, or form to turn back to God unless we allow ourselves to. Because God is inside us, he's all around us, he's with us, and he lives through us. His spirit lives in all of us and in everything that he created, even the animals that we're supposed to be caring for but supposedly drive to extinction every single day. And we can only do this for so long until all the animals go extinct on our hand. And even then we'll have no one else to blame but ourselves. And it will all be our fault because we refuse to ask God for help, much less accept his help. So do you get it now? Do you understand what God's been trying to tell me this whole time? Because I remember a lot of what God's been telling me over the last two years and few months. I know what he's been trying to tell me my entire life, for the most part. But I don't know as much as God does. In fact, I know astronomically less than he does compared to everything that he allows himself to know. Because he's God, he can do that. And let me just say right now, I know wholeheartedly, without any doubt in my mind, that God has told me all of this that I've just said. And I know this because it is absolutely true. God never lies to me, and he never lies to any of us. And we, as human beings, are running out of time to realize that. In fact, we're not running out of time. We're already out of time. But we're living on borrowed time as well because God allows us to. Because for some reason, God still has some patience left in him. Somehow, some way, in ways that none of us will ever explain or ever try to explain. But we have to turn back to him now. We have to turn back to him now before it's too late. And when it's too late, it will be too late. I'm Kevin Lisco Anderson, founder, owner, operator, chairman, and CEO of the Baptist Christian Independent Grassroots Media Corporation, Skull Media Enterprises. Signing out for now. Have a good day.